Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about learning styles. Uh, please press the like button on the left hand side as well as the subscribe button on the right side and the notification bell that's after it on the right side. Thank you. So the first thing I want to talk about are learning styles. I didn't really know that learning styles existed until I went through the rehab process and my OT was actually talking to me about it, but not until we'd actually gotten into it for a bit. And it's something that I wish would have been covered sooner, because maybe it would have helped me better identify the types of tools that I personally would probably be more responsive to, or that would be more effective or would work better for me. So that's what I'm talking with you about today. Depending on how you Google things, it might say that there's more than four, but right now I'm just going to be talking about sort of the four big main ones that were kind of covered. Really three of them were covered. I had to go and look up what the fourth one was. That's how much it just didn't, I personally don't identify with that one. So, so the first one starts with the letter V, which is what I've written out. And also if you have a piece of paper in front of you, maybe you might want to try and write down the same thing. So we're gonna, this is called four learning styles. First one is V for vision or visual. And that's basically when you're taking information in through your eyes. When you receive information from different types of teachers, be they formal teachers like a teacher in a classroom or one of your rehab therapists like your OT, your speech therapist, your physical therapist, etc., etc., there are different ways that people teach and then there are different ways that people receive the information. We're talking about how you receive information. The next one is the opposite shape of a V and that's audio or auditory and that is when someone's talking and you listen. an ear. So when this person here is talking, your hearing takes in this information. The next one I'm calling experiential. Or when I tried to look up beforehand this it also said kinis I might not be spelled correctly, or kinesiology. I would say this is using your hands. So this would be when your hands are doing something, like if you were playing sports and somebody threw a ball at you. And you catch the ball, that's, you're experiencing the game and you're learning by doing.
doing. And the fourth style, which is reading writing. That's a book and writing with a that's a pencil or it could be a pen, doesn't matter. This one is kind of I guess this would be handouts maybe. Handouts with information. on it. So maybe somebody gives you an after visit summary after you go to the doctor's office about what you covered or talked about in your doctor's appointment or you get a vaccine and they give you a handout for what if any side effects to expect after. Something like that. So it could be somebody gives you a textbook and they just say, here, read this book. And I guess the writing part would be you think about what you want to write and then you write. Now, you can be a combination of these different styles. So this is a V, A, E, R, or W. So you could just be just one just one, just one, just one, or you could be like a combination of two, maybe even three. You probably, there's a good chance that you probably respond to all of these, but if you think about it, you may have a preferred style that you just respond better to, that you retain the information better and longer. So now I want you to take a moment and think about which of these is your preferred learning style for me in the comments down below. For me personally, I am mostly these top two styles. I'm gonna put another piece of paper down so you can just focus on what I'm saying. So I am mostly a visual learner. I didn't know this before I went to OT, but I know this now. I learn best by seeing things. And then I learn second best by listening to things. I don't really learn super well by doing. I think this concept of learning by doing is a well-known concept. Maybe if you're learning something new in a job or if somebody were to present me with information that they want me to learn or they want me to know and they only gave me, they only taught me with this particular method in mind, I might be able to do pieces of it and I would fumble through, I would struggle with it a lot, it would take me a very long time. And then I probably would need a lot of help. But more importantly, after whatever that, that focused learning piece of time was done, or instructional time, I probably won't remember it. And if I had to go and replicate it and take that information and teach somebody else or get tested on it or something like that, I would not do well. This is an important skill to have. It's an important skill that's an important part of your toolbox 
but this is something that I personally am not very good at. And then the last style, reading, writing. I have a hard time with this, especially now after an injury. I used to love to read a lot. I would read every day about multiple things, usually short form articles. I was very up to date on the news, what was going on in the world, what's happening within my local community. I read for fun, I read, I read for knowledge, I read to learn how to do things. I consider myself a lifelong learner, I always have, but the learning is different now post brain injury. Reading is a lot more difficult for me now than it used to be, especially reading on screens. Um, that's something to talk about in another video. Writing is also difficult. I'm getting better at it, but I still run into a lot of difficulty, particularly post brain injury. Writing involves using a lot of different areas of your brain cohesively together all at once, and that's something that So I'm getting better with it, but it's a journey. So if somebody were, especially post brain injury, to give me a book, especially a very large book that wasn't broken out into bits and pieces, maybe all the information about a brain injury, and I was just expected to just know everything in that book, I would run into a lot of different first even pulling in that information to my brain to a place where I can understand it and then so being able to comprehend it, do things with it, be able to think critically, be able to seek out clarifications, be able to even realize, recognize what I need help with clarifying, having difficulty understanding, finding the right words to ask the questions that I have but that just aren't really coming out because I can't figure out the right words for it. This is difficult, especially in spring injury. So if somebody only gave me information in this way, would I eventually get it? Maybe. Maybe bits and pieces, yeah. But I probably wouldn't retain it. I will probably forget it very quickly. The likelihood of information making it into long-term memory is slim, so that that might not be the case for you. So I think it's really important to, to figure out which of these styles is your style, be it, you know, vision or you know, auditory or experiential or reading, writing. These two, the top two up here, vision, audio, these are difficult for me post brain injury in that I developed a lot of light sensitivity, or uh, it's also called photophobia. The light sensitivity, I, that's for another video, I've gone through multiple classes, but it's painful and I am now a few out, years out from my brain injury and I still have difficulty with it and it's something that I've made a very deliberate and concerted effort with my care team to try to do what I can to acclimate better, but it's difficult because it's not even just that you're sensitive, it's, it's that it causes searing pain, it like goes right into your head, and if you don't already have a migraine, it'll induce it, if you already have a migraine, it'll make it worse, so that's difficult. The same thing, especially with screens, lights, even if you remove the blue light. The vision is something you probably make a whole series of videos on. Yes, and then audio, depending on how your brain injury is, I mean, they vary, but I can speak from my personal experience. In my personal experience, I developed a lot of sound sensitivity where basically everything was loud, even if it was quiet to everybody else, it was still too loud. Like, loud enough I could hear the throbbing in my head along with the pain, like the physical pain. And sometimes I could actually feel the throbbing.
throbbing long here. So this is also something I can make a series of things on. I didn't realize prior to my brain injury that these were my two preferred styles. But for the audio part, which I would not have thought of, it makes sense for me in that prior to my brain injury, I was in the process of learning another language. And the method for learning that language, the, the way the information is delivered, is strictly audio-based. And so I, for me, I hear like a rhythm with the words and pronunciations and speed and just all of these different attributes, whether or not I'm consciously thinking of them, I am subconsciously recognizing them. I think probably one of the reasons why, personally for me, the audio section or audio learning style probably is something that I've developed well over the years is because I come from a musical background. I played some form of instrument ever since I was younger. While growing up, I have a deep love and appreciation for instruments. And I played instruments that would be on the melody side like, you know, if, if you had, if you heard a song on the airwaves, it would be, you know, the melody would be the part that somebody is singing the words. And then behind, it would be like sort of the top level, things that are in uh, G clef, like, uh, G clef, uh, or treble clef, like the top line of, um, line of a, a musical staff, I would, I played instruments, I sang, like, I, I did a bunch of different things, but I also played instruments that involved the bass clef, which is all, of, like, the lower sounding notes, the things that don't sound like the melody, but tend to be the harmony. They're the things like, this is the melody in the middle. The harmony is what goes around and, and, and sort of envelops and supports. Like, this is the melody, and this here is the harmony. So the melody is mostly what you hear. It's, it's closer to the sound of that, that people in general hear. I see people in general meaning like the average person if they had to listen to a piece of music that had words in it they would probably mostly hear the melody and this would be the section that they would be repeating the bass line or the, the things that are played in harmony or in the, the lower notes the surrounding notes the things that don't really sound like the top line the things that sound like the bottom line that sort of fill in the gaps or uh, leave space, those tend to be harder for someone who doesn't have a musically trained ear and hasn't either played those types of roles in an overall composition, or ensemble, or band, or anything like that. Um, there are th the things that support the main thing that's going on, but they have just as complicated, sometimes simpler, like you hold notes longer, or you repeat certain patterns of notes, but um, so there isn't as much variation but there's still complexity in the bass line and to the average untrained ear a lot of people who aren't as musically inclined have a lot of difficulty finding 
um, the baseline. The baseline often is also where you'll more emphatically hear like a downbeat. So people who are dancers, I think you can usually, especially if you've been doing it for a while, you've been trained to sort of recognize like a pickup note and then a downbeat. So the point is, just in the course of like my life in general, um, prior to my brain injury, I already had a higher than average um, sense of developed ear. I had not a professional ear, definitely a lot more I could learn, but I was at an advantage to this. So this is probably one of the reasons why this is a learning style that resonates with me. Um, as for visual, prior to my brain injury was I still have a creator and artist type of background as well. I used to do a lot of data visualizations. I have developed and learned an aesthetic that works for me and I tend to know what looks good and what is memorable when it comes to certain pieces of visual information. So it makes sense that I'm a visual learner. But once again, before OT, I had no idea that these styles existed or that I should take the time to figure out which of these styles most resonates with me and then approach rehab that way. You should pick up tools in all of these areas and work to further develop them. But you can save yourself a lot of time and a lot of grief and a lot of frustration if you just take a moment and figure out which of these sounds most like you. Um, because then you can better, more readily identify interventions, like when they're presented to you from your care team, that sound like they make sense. I mean, approach things with an open mind, but um, know that not everything's going to work for everyone, but you don't need to waste expensive copays focusing on a style that just isn't going to work well for you. Um, going to doctor's appointments, especially if you don't have insurance, is really, really, really expensive. It can be hundreds of dollars just for one visit. So you want to use your limited time well, and figuring this out now will help better inform, I think, the goals that you have and you have that you develop in collaboration with your team. And it'll also help keep you motivated because you'll be able to get lower hanging fruit and earlier wins to help propel you forward versus just struggling and feeling like you're going through a lot in an uphill battle to try to make progress. If I had if I had only had this style experiential learning by doing, if I had only had rehab that was focused this way, it would have been monumentally more difficult. Um, so I'm very thankful it wasn't it. I didn't know that OTs tend to look at this, you know, behind the scenes, but I think if you're able to go in and be a little bit prepared and be like, or if you're not sure, ask your OT. Like, say, hey, I was hearing about learning styles, you know, we've worked together for a bit of time, what do you think my learning style or styles are, my preferred learning styles are, and they will tell you. <laughs> like, for me, when I first had heard about it, um, which was not in OT, at least not directly in OT, um, I had taken like a quiz and I was trying to pick 
And I was like, I don't actually know, but I thought it was an interesting premise. And the next time I went to my next OT appointment, I asked my OT, and immediately, my OT was like, you are this with a little bit of this, and here are all the reasons why. And these are the types of things that probably will work better for you. And, you know, your rehab team, when you have a brain injury, it's a process. And for a lot of people, it's a lifelong process. For me, it's going to be a lifelong process. And when you are seeing um, care professionals who are well-trained and they get to know you, or they get to know the person you are right in that moment, maybe not your back history, but who you are in that moment, they're doing assessments all the time, whether or not you realize it. And they can help you understand this information um, in a way that makes sense for you. Um, if something doesn't make sense, ask them to explain it another way. My speech therapists were really great in that. And they were like, and OT was great with that too, where it's like, there are a lot of times, and so there are still a lot of times when I just don't understand what's going on and somebody tries to explain it to me. And the rehab team is usually better, but when you're talking with, you know, just everyday people in your life, sometimes they're not teachers. They didn't go to school to become teachers. They didn't go to school to provide any form of education for more informed with other people. And not everybody is great at that. And those situations are usually the ones where I find myself struggling a lot with understanding whatever somebody's trying to tell me because they're just not used to trying to be in a position where they have to teach somebody something. And in those situations in particular, the strategy that OT and speech gave me was that just tell me, like, you know, I'm trying really, really hard. I want to understand what you're trying to tell me. Can you please say it again? Or better yet, can you, like, try to explain it to me? a different way and if somebody is hopefully patient and kind and understanding you know you have a brain injury please make things easier hopefully they can help you and, and they'll try again hopefully and if not they're not the right people for you i can tell you i've met a lot of people who are not patient unfortunately and who are not understanding not everybody's like that thank goodness but i've met a lot of people I've had to have interactions with a lot of people who don't understand that and that can be really difficult and at times disheartening um, and usually the person who ends up paying the price is you because you lose time and you forget that you were trying to do something until you know a period of time comes up and you, a trigger pops up again and it re-reminds you oh somebody was supposed to do something or get back to me and they never did. Let me try to hold on to that thought long enough to go do something else about it. So that's probably, you know, stories for another time. So yes, these are the four main styles. If you look up on Google, you could say, what are learning styles? That would be the Google words to use. When you Google things, Sometimes I might say there are two learning styles. Maybe there's, I saw something that said seven or eight learning styles, but uh, I was taught that there's basically like three or four learning styles, and these are what those are. And I think the others, there are differences, and it's probably worth mentioning. Um, but uh, I guess, I guess there's other stuff. So. Uh, as I'm looking right here right now, so another thing that this could have been would have been um, yeah, I'm just gonna write this down in a different one. So if you Google a different phrase and it's called uh, let's see eight learning styles, which you know, this may or may not be confusing for you, but I'm just going to tell you 
what it says right now. So the first one is visual, or it says spatial. Uh, the next one is aural or audio. Uh, the next one is physical, tactile. The next one is verbal or linguistic. The next one is logical or analytical. The next one is social. Uh, I don't know why this says it could be linguistic too, but that doesn't make sense to me. I didn't make this list. The next one is solo. And then the notch, next one is nature, nurture. I think these are probably all true to some extent. I would not group them this way, but that's okay. Maybe some of these words will resonate with you. So visual, spatial. So spatial is interesting because, so I would say all of these here on the four learning types are a very large, I would say these are sort of like umbrella terms. These are maybe more specific. So like I learn visually. For me personally, I <laughs> I have difficulty with spatial learning now. Um, sometimes it has to do with like where you are in space, and that's a special word called proprioceptive. This will resonate to you if you fall or lose balance. And this plays into a system called your vestibular system. It basically has to do with how there's there's two different types. One has to do with crystals in your ear. That's supposed to be a crystal or like a diamond, I don't know. And the other one just has to do with your CNS, your central nervous system. And basically it has to do with how information from your ears gets into your brain and how it's interpreted. But if you have difficulty with, if you fall a lot, if you lose balance a lot, I would also say if you get lost a lot, all of these things I have difficulty with. Those are things, these are systems, these are areas where you have difficulty with that's impacted by your visual system. Um, audio, or we went over this, physical tactile, sort of that experiential. Verbal linguistic, this was something that I was very good at, especially just before um, the accident. I had already been learning another language um, and I was well in the process of it when my brain injury occurred. Logical, analytical, it's like spatial. I, I'm somebody who used to make maps for a living. Um, it was one of the types of work that I used to do and I used to make maps for a living which is very a visual thing and I have difficulty interpreting maps now. So that is that is one of the things I have difficulty with now. Uh, I also did a lot of logistics and analytical work uh, prior to my brain injury. I have a lot of difficulty with this now. Social, this is sort of, you know, being in a group cooking class. Solo is just teaching yourself. Nature, nurture, I guess nature's, you're just born that way and nurtures, you learn better. So hopefully this information is helpful to you. Let me know um, in the comments below and uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, please also like this video 
and subscribe if you haven't already and press the notification bell so you can be alerted whenever a new video um, arrives. By the way, you don't need to be watching these videos. You can be listening to the videos and then as you start to evolve in your rehab process, if you're able to come back and visually watch as well, that's great. Vision plus audio, that's a video. So if you're somebody who used to be good with like screens, uh, in particular like movies or TV shows or going to see a concert or a play or anything where you're looking and you're hearing at the same time, it's a good chance that you're up in this area too. Um, I will also say if you or someone you know happens to be a teacher, or they become a teacher, maybe they're an informal teacher, maybe they're a caregiver, someone who's helping you out with everything, um, or maybe you know you yourself are looking at trying to help out a loved one who's having difficulty, try to think, just as there are learning styles, there are also teaching styles, teaching formats, but try to think about and incorporate these different types of components when you're conveying information. So say, say you keep talking to somebody and you keep telling them on the phone how to do something and they still don't get what you're saying. Okay, then maybe they're a visual art learner, so take out a piece of paper and draw them a picture and then maybe they'll get it. Or maybe you just keep talking and talking and talking to them over and over again and they're just not getting what you're saying, okay, give them a handout where they can look at written words, they can underline things, they can highlight stuff. If you do that, they're more likely to be successful. Or maybe, you know what, they're just somebody who is just really comfortable with using their hands and you try to say, you know, this is how you cut a bell pepper and they just, they just don't get it, they can't get it. Well then, give them, you know, utensils and show them how to actually cut the bell pepper and and watch them and help them with it and then maybe they'll be more successful so if you have somebody that you're helping out in your life and you're trying your best to communicate with them you might be communicating in your preferential style like maybe you're a very hands-on person maybe you're like an engineer or something like that you know or you work in construction, or you're a builder, you do stuff with your hands all the time, and but the person you're talking to, you know, just wants to look at paintings, and, and they could talk to you for days about paintings, but they can't talk to you about, you know, different tools in the toolbox and how they go together. If you're not getting through, check to see if you yourself are using and trying to convey information in your preferred learning style and ask them or think about okay what's their preferred learning style or if you don't even know just try a different one try try this one try recording it and talking to them again on the phone or replaying this video at a later time when they can come back and they can concentrate more on what's being said or you know um, have them write something out so that they have to actually like, try to think about it and maybe you might be more successful so it works both way both from the learner and from the teacher so um, this is that information and I hope this is helpful um, and I hope it saves you a lot of time it's something that I wish I had learned um, a long time before I actually needed to and I wish I had learned this type of information earlier on in my rehab journey um, because I think I probably would have had a hopefully less frustrating time and maybe not an easier time because it's hard no matter what but um, I think I would have felt more progress um, or mostly I, I would have maybe felt less like I wasn't getting it, even though I wasn't getting it. Um, I can't find the right words for it, but, you know, I hope you understand. I want to save you time so that you don't end up in the same situation. 
if you don't have to. Um, also, if you know anybody who might benefit from learning this information, please send them a copy of the video. You know, share this video with them so that they don't have to go and be struggling and they don't have to struggle. Um, I think when you're a provider and you're at a certain level, especially if you're not working with beginners or you yourself are brand new in the job, it's easy to skip over stuff that you think maybe somebody else covered because maybe it wasn't your responsibility or maybe it is your responsibility, but you just assume that the people know. Assume that people know nothing and, and start from the beginning, even if you don't think you have to start from the beginning because they might know some stuff, but there's always more room to grow. And sometimes having a bigger framework piece like this would be helpful. Um, I was in a, an executive functioning class um, that they put me into, which was hugely helpful. And I felt like I learned so much from it. And yet, I wish they had stuck me in the executive functioning class way earlier on, because the executive functioning class gave me a framework to to categorize and to put things into and to help it make more sense when they were teaching all these other things in rehab. Um, I, I think there's so many things that could have gone better if I had been put in that class in the beginning. Even today, if I had to tell you executive functioning, you know, I guess this is for another video, but I still can't exactly define it for you. But I know that that is the Google word that I'm supposed to look for and that a lot of things that fall into that category are relevant for how things are for me now post brain injury were not relevant at all for me before my brain injury i didn't have difficulties with executive functioning before brain injury but i do now so um even if i personally cannot explain it exactly to you i know that's the google word the google phrase that somebody else who has more training who has more background they can go and look it up, or if you want to look it up. So, um, hope that helps. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. Uh.